these are the solutions to the problems at the end of lesson 3.2. So very quickly going through the multiple choice, the two resistors could be either in series or in parallel. The one that has the lowest equivalent resistance is when they're in parallel, so that's A. Which of the following statements about Ohm's law is false? The thing that is false is that the resistance of all materials falls within a narrow range of values. You can have a very large range of resistances. Now question three, that is the graph question. And the statement that is the best description is that A, the resistor obeys Ohm's law for voltages between 0 and 25 volts, because that's the area of the graph that's a straight line. Number four, which one of the following statements is not a characteristic of a voltmeter? That was C, that the ideal voltmeter has almost no resistance, because in fact the ideal voltmeter has quite a high resistance. So let's start on the calculations, which is beginning with question five. So here we have three resistors in parallel. We have 16 ohms, 8 ohms, and 4 ohms. We want to find the equivalent resistance for this combination. So 1 over 16 plus 1 over 8 plus 1 over 4. Now I'm going to put them all over 16. So we have 1 over 16 plus 2 over 16 plus 4 over 16 gives us 7 over 16. So that means that RP itself is 16 over 7 and that is to two significant figures 2.3 ohms. So now question 6 we have the walls of a biological cell. We know that the resistance of the wall is 5 by 10 to the 9 ohms. And we're told that the potential difference across the walls is going to be 75 millivolts. So 75 by 10 to the minus 3 volts. Part A asks, what is the current? So we use Ohm's law. V over R, 75 by 10 to the minus 3 over 5 by 10 to the 9. That gives us a current of 1.5 by 10 to the minus 11 amps. And for the question of how much charge travels, or how many ions really, how many ions travel in 0.5 seconds? So we need to look at how much charge is travelling in 0.5 seconds. Now we know 1 amp is 1 coulomb per second. So that means 1.5 by 10 to the minus 11 amps means that 1.5 by 10 to the minus 11 coulombs flows in 1 second. So in 0.5 seconds, we're going to divide that by 2, the charge that flows will be 7.5 by 10 to the minus 12 coulombs. And going right back to our rule where the total charge is the number of particles times the charge on each one, and in this case each of these ions has a charge of magnitude E. So we now have the number equals total charge divided by charge on an electron, and that turns out to be 1.6 by, hang on, other way around, we had the 7.5 by 10 to the minus 12 over 1.6 by 10 to the minus 19. And that tells us that there are, in fact, 4.7 by 10 to the 7 ions passing in that half second time interval. Now, question 7. And this one was tricky, so don't worry if you didn't get it. But the things that we're told is that we have 12 volts, and when the resistors are in series, we have uh, a current of 2 amps. So that means the resistance of the series combination is 12 volts over 2 amps, which is 6 ohms. And the resistance of the parallel combination is the 12 volts, but it is 9 amps. 
So that makes it 1.33 ohms. Now, we know that the series combination is going to be R1 plus R2. And the parallel combination tells us that 1 over Rp is going to be 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. So we have two simultaneous equations for R1 and R2. So what we're going to do is get R2 as the subject of the equation for part 1, and we're going to substitute that into equation number 2. So Rs was 6, so we have R2 was 6 minus R1. And then we're told that 1 over Rp, which is 1 over 1 and a third, is 1 over R1 plus 1 over 6 minus R1, sorry, R1. So what we're now going to do is multiply both sides by R1 times 6 minus R1, and then we're going to see what we get. So R1 times 6 minus R1 over 1.33 equals, that will be 6 minus R1 plus R1. So now the 1 over 1.33 is just 1 over 1 and a third, which is 3 quarters. So we have 0 0.75 times R1 times 6 minus R1 equals 6 minus R1 plus R1 is just 6. So let's work this out. We have 0 0.75 times R1 times 6. So that turns out to be 4.5 R1 minus 0 0.75 times R1 times R1, so that's R1 squared equals 6. So I'm going to go over the page here, but you can see we are heading towards a quadratic equation. So from over the page, we have 4.5 R1 minus 0.75 R1 squared equals 6. First thing we're going to do is take 6 over all the same side, minus 6 equals 0. The next thing I'm going to do is multiply it all by minus 1, just, I, we don't have to, but it just gets a positive term for R1 squared, and I'm going to bring that out the front. So we have 0.75 R1 squared minus 4.5 R1 plus 6 equals 0. Now that is something of the form ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. Now the solution to that, the quadratic equation, is that x equals minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. So we have a is 0.75, B is minus 4.5 and C equals 6. So that gives us R1 equals 4.5 plus or minus square root of 4.5 squared minus 0.75 times 6 times 4 over 2 times 0 0.75. So that is 4.5 plus or minus 20.25 minus 18 over 1.5. That gives us 4.5 plus or minus 1.5 over 1.5. So we're going to get two solutions here. We have 6 over 1.5 or 3 over 1.5, which means we have 4 ohms or 2 ohms. And since this is basically a symmetric problem where you've got the 2 in 
parallel, or the two in series, then either, if R1 is either 4 ohms or 2 ohms, then R2, because remember they add up to 6, that means R2 would be 2 ohms or 4 ohms. So 4 or 2, and then it would be 2 or 4, so that either way they fit both of those equations. Now, question 8 takes a bit of time, but it's just really the same couple of steps done over and over again. So, quickly drawing my circuit, I apologise for how bad it is, but if I could draw, I probably would have become an art teacher. So, 2, 6, 4, 3, and we have a 1, 2, and 3 ohm in series. Now, we're going to get the equivalent of this combination. So that's easy. We just add them up since they're in series. So that simplifies down now to 2, 6, this one where we have 2 ohms, 4 here, 6 here, 3 here, and 6 here. The next combination I'm going to simplify is this parallel combination here. I can't go any further because the next six is in series, but I can say that the equivalent of that parallel combination is 1 over 3 plus 1 over 6, which is 2 over 6 plus 1 over 6, which is 3 over 6. So that means RP itself is 6 over 3, which is 2. So I'm now simplifying that circuit. as 2, 4, 6, and 2. So now, this is easy, these two are in series again. So now we've simplified it down to 2 and 4 and 8. So again, we have a parallel combination here where 1 over RP is 1 over 4 plus 1 over 8. Notice they're quite nice numbers here. So we have 3 over 8, so RP equals 8 over 3. Now some slightly not so nice numbers, but they're still pretty good because we are near the end. We have our 2 ohm still, and now we are down to 2.67, and these are in series, so we just add them up, and that becomes 4.67 ohms is the equivalent resistance.